Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. Oh wait, do you wanna are you ready? <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Your intro oh. right there. <laughs> It's nice. <laughs> Welcome to another zombies video from me, starring this time Noah J four five six. Say hello, Noah. Hello. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. <laughs> the spotlight is on. You're alone. the The crowd is waiting on your every move. We're going to be talking <laughs> zombies today, and specifically some of the things that me and Noah have talked about together, and also talked to our viewers about. I've polled people on Twitter. I've asked my stream chats about all this sorts of stuff to try and get an idea of roughly where the community wants certain features and systems to be for Cold War. So today's topic is going to be the health system. We're going to be talking jug. We're going to be talking player health, like base health, and then also zombie health and how that changes, health caps, all those sorts of things. Because I think it would be a really good idea to just quickly shout out into the ether what we want to see happen and then obviously it can be an ongoing dialogue once we see what happens in cold war uh what treyarch have for us in store and all that sort of stuff so noah first question off the jump so that i can get an idea of how i need to play devil's advocate in this video because i want to sort of like go back and forth a little bit what is your rough ideal favorite system from the games that we've had so far for zombie health and the way that that all sort of works. Are you a BO4 fan or more like a BO3, BO2 sort of style person? Mm, so is, is this in terms of high rounds or like just progression up to like round 30? What are uh, we talking here? It, are there different answers for each? Because I'd like yes. to hear both. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'll start with the kind of like 1 to 30, which I call like the early game in zombies, right? Sure. That's where you're getting set up, you're progressing through the game, and you're getting everything built, maybe doing the Easter egg, maybe doing pack punch, all that good stuff. <laughs> One through 30, um, I am a fan of, big shocker here, Black Ops 3. And more so, on this one, actually, it's kind of basically all the games before BO4. Yeah. I felt that BO4 the zombie health ramped up way too quickly and i don't know if it was the removal of double tap i don't know if it was the weapon damage that needed tuning but basically bo4 zombies i felt like got way too powerful and by powerful i mean just hard to kill with a lot of bullets too quickly where unless you were just absolutely optimizing your pack bunches and you had a quad pack bunch weapon by like round 20 i felt like the guns were way too weak and the only way to actually kill zombies was specialist weapons for a lot of the a lot of the games mm. so <sighs> <laughs> sorry i just left you i left you out to dry there <laughs> Uh, okay, good stuff. What about the uh, <laughs> what about the system? <laughs> More like uh, like uh, the post round thirty, like high roundy kind right. of angle. Where, where do you yeah. stand with that? So, so the thirty, the thirty to a hundred, we'll, we'll call it that. And that system, I I basically I see I see a few different systems. One was the basically version where you just have either a getting wonder weapons out of the box repeatedly to refill the ammo. Or you had the trap systems that in different maps employed different strategies. Uh, a lot of these really famous round 100s or even lack thereof of round 100 all have to do with how lucky you have to get and how many box hits you have to get out uh, to get the wonder weapons back yeah. in order to actually be able to kill zombies. I think that system's trash. I, I, think, <laughs> I, I, think, I think having to rely on traps and anything that is basically just stalling for time where the game isn't hard, it's just you have to wait, you're playing against your own patience, is boring and not a good system. So those maps where you have to use a trap to get to round 100, I think that's a trash system. In comparison, BO4 almost took the opposite route, where the zombie's health actually caps. Mm. And what you get with that is you end up with one single, not even a wonder weapon, the Helian Salvo being a wonder weapon. Like, it's a rocket launcher, but it's literally the best weapon in the game because you can get to round 100 with the Helian Salvo just standing in a corner and spamming. Yep. So I think BO4 took it too far in the other direction of zombies health being capped results in boring gameplay if there is a super overpowered weapon. And even if there isn't, the zombies health is still high enough where 
you're not relying on alternate ammo types because they they sucked in BO4, uh, right. but you're relying on basically a wall buy or something. I don't even know what other strategies there were because the Helium Salvo did exist. Sure. Um, so, so, so with with the traps then, just to jump in on yeah. that then, because I'm really interested in the fact that you're not a traps fan at all. For me, like I remember doing like high round runs back in the day on BO1 and loving the idea of like having to optimize my timing of like I'm on the ascension lander or the PhD lander and I have to go around a certain number of times and then I time it so that I hit the fire trap that's on the way to power and then I end up going back again and I hit the trap on the way to stamina up and I go back again and I'm like trying to sort of juggle all these different timers in my head and things like that and it felt very unique to that map and you compare it to another map like Aquino for instance where I was running another like there's another trap strat that is extremely popular on Kino, making use of a sort of invincibility glitch. And that, again, is like super unique to Kino. It feels very much like you could only ever do that on that map. Do you feel like the traps themselves are like, what is it about the traps themselves that's boring to you or that's less interesting? Because to me, it feels like like an extension of the map itself, which I quite like. Um, All of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, fair. so, so fair tra enough. traps, the entire uniqueness of traps is totally thrown out the window by the fact that you have to wait for them, that they're on timers. I think any time where you are just stalling, and it's the same thing, it's the same system, whether it be the traps in the early games or alternate ammo types in BO4, any time that is literally just a downtime where you are waiting for a timer to go down until you can do anything yeah. is boring and a bad system in my mind. Okay, so a follow-up question there then. Yeah, what about the timers on alternate ammo types? Do you dislike the fact that you pop your dead wire and you have to wait whatever it is like 17 seconds or something for it to come back up or is that okay uh it depends on which game we're talking about because bo3 the timer for dead wire is low enough that i feel like i am running around i pop my dead wire and then i have to maneuver i took a couple seconds to turn behind me i've got round 70 zombies spawning on me i'm not gonna be able to shoot my way out of the situation i have to maneuver and get into a position and it's easier on some maps than other given but you have to maneuver and get to a spot where you are now safe and by the time you do that by the time you perform that maneuver you're ready to kill more zombies gotcha okay yeah. so it's the fact that you don't you don't when you're doing that feel like you're waiting because you're literally just moving into the next place to be able to shoot yeah. the zombie again and so it's like it's quick enough okay so that's really interesting so let's in that case for the purpose of the rest of this discussion let's take traps out of the equation yeah. Okay, let's go forward assuming that Cold War Zombies isn't going to have a single trap and let's actually, just for the purpose of the talk as well, include buildable traps in that as well because buildable traps are something that I thought were really cool in BO2. I like the idea of like having the head chopper, for buried, example, yeah. on Buried and being able to build that if you wanted and then maybe making a strat that was reliant on just that particular trap or customizing your trap or your strategy, sorry, to use the flinger or whatever, right? I liked those sorts of ways you could customize things that were map specific in BO2, but let's get rid of those as well for now so we can really drill down into the health and the way that all works. In my opinion, BO1, really, really cool for... The, the just the, the the base wonder weapons they were so good it felt so good to be using the scavenger even though it didn't one hit kill on call of the dead the scavengers felt amazing thunder gun phenomenal weapon like no one's going to disagree with that sort of thing i don't think but for me bo1 just having wonder weapons strategies in my opinion is a little less interesting bo2 spices up with buildables let's ignore those for now what we do get in bo3 is the aats as like an extension of the Wonder Weapon strats. And so you might be going for your Apothecon Servant in Shadows of Evil, for instance, but then also in Shadows, you're thinking about having your Blast Furnace to charge your sword and your turned as well. You're kind of like not really min-maxing, but you're trying to optimize and juggle all these like extra currencies essentially while you play. And those currencies in some situations, it's like an economy of how fast you can kill the zombies. You're, you're juggling your alternate ammo type timers, but then you're also thinking about how fast you can kill with the Apothecon Servant and how fast to shoot or not to make sure that you're optimizing there. And you're being careful about the ammo you've got in that. And then you've got your sword as well. And so it means that 
I think there's a really rich and diverse kind of landscape for the player to try and find the best pot possible strategy they can in order to take the zombies down. And you do have traps in Shadows, don't get me wrong, but they're actually limited damage. Like, those chain traps don't insta-kill. And so you end up with a scenario where you can use them early game if you need some help, I suppose, but they don't end up being something that you have to rely on, which maybe for you is preferable, it sounds like. Yeah, I think... I think that strats like traps, strats like buried where everybody just piles into a corner and you use a bunch of buildable traps. I yeah. don't think those are bad. I, I don't I don't mind that there's easier strats to get to 100. My problem arises when it's it's basically the slow way is the only way. Right. And that's kind of what it felt like for my for the older games and that's kind of where I think BO3 got it right cuz there are camping strats on BO3. Mm -hmm. But either they run out early on, like the Ray Gun Mark III, you can corner camp with it, but it only lasts to around like around 55 or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, you can you can do these different strats on BO3, but the best strat is running around, getting up, and actually playing the game. And right. I, I don't mind that people, if you want to do those strats, you can, but mm -hmm. I like that the the most fun one, the highest skill one is an A, relying on a random number generator. Mm. to give you the weapon out of the box or waiting for a max ammo. I like that I can buy a wall buy, have a non-RNG gun with infinite ammo that is going to make me play with uh, zombie skill to run around. And I think a lot of the people, the argument is, oh, it becomes too easy. Alternate ammo types are too OP. What I want to ask those people is that I know with an exception of like a few of, a few of you out there who legitimately do play like bo1 and bo4 round 100s more than bo3 mm -hmm. what are 99 percent of players going to want to actually go for a high round on the one that takes six to eight hours and <laughs> is actually fun or the one that takes 14 hours and is super boring the whole time i i think more players have gone for bo3 round 100s than any other map because it's the most engaging and the most fun. I, I don't even want to play the old maps around 100s because I find them so incredibly boring. Okay, so and I have I have a, a direct counter to that point, or not necessarily a counter, but like something I would be curious to get your thoughts on then. Mm -hmm. If you're saying that for you, the most enjoyable experience is like really focusing on your alternate ammo types, less on the wonder weapons and like getting your gun off the wall, getting the pack a punch, getting the AAT that you want, and then mm. like optimizing those. What does that mean for Cold War where we know that there are now weapon loadouts and the weapons on the walls potentially are going to be something that we're going to be able to get like rare versions of that should in theory be viable for the whole game. Do you want the gun that's in your weapon loadout to be something that you could be using for the entire match? And also if not that weapon loadout weapon, do you want a gun that's off the wall to actually be something that you're using the entire match on D Machine? And then when DLC 1 comes out and we're like playing beneath the clouds of Venus or something, maybe there you'll be using your exact same wonder weapon. As, oh, sorry, not wonder weapon, wall weapon as well. Like, would you want it to be the same wall weapons, same maps every time, same kind of flow on every map? So I think each map has its own. While that there are certain, while I think alternate ammo types needs to be a viable strategy on every single map and a fast strategy on every map where the recharge time is quick, I don't think that it necessarily is the only way, even on BO3. Because on BO3, I, I mean, obviously it kind of depends on what kind of gobble gums you're running, but even if you're just running classic gobble gums, the alchemical strats are super, super useful for going to high rounds without obviously having any microtransactions. You can stand in a certain spot on revelations and use alchemical and go through like 10 rounds on the early rounds because yep. it's that powerful of a strat with the wonder weapon, which still makes use of the map, makes it unique, makes mm -hmm. it have, uh, makes you required to have map knowledge where you know where that super fast spawn point is for the zombies. Uh, those round 100 strats, there's a reason that a lot of them aren't running around and using alternate ammo types, but that is a viable one at the end of the day on every single map. And right. I think I think it's important to have that balance where each one of those maps has that map knowledge. If you go on Origins and you use the I staff and stand in this spot and uh, move around like this, you can optimize the spawns and yep. make the most use out of your ammo. Mm -hmm. But if you run out of ammo on the I staff, you're kind of screwed. You just have to... you're 
you got nothing. You're in for a bad time. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad time because the zombies have so much health. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think it, I think it's a I think it's a give and take. I think there needs to be a consistent strategy that isn't relying on RNG. And to to answer your point about like the wall weapons and the starting ones, I think that needs to be part of your setup, right? Maybe you upgrade the rarity of your gun by giving it multiple pack of punches. Maybe you can start out with well, one thing I really want for Cold War is mm. for you to start out with a weapon that's useful on rounds one to ten, and after that it is trash. It doesn't matter if it's a uh, Galil or a uh, XM4, sure. whatever, whatever gun. <laughs> it the rarity of the gun is going to be low, the lowest possible because you got it for free off the start. And even yeah. wall weapons maybe should only go to like a green rarity. But mm. if you get a green rarity gun, say you get the XM4 off the wall, it's green rarity. You go through a process to upgrade that gun to a gold version of the gun. You can still grab ammo off the off the wall buy, but you've you've not been set up since the second you bought the wall buy. There's still work to do. There's still process of actually getting OP in the game. Mm. And at the end of the day, I think this all comes down to people like shooting zombies and the zombies dying. And if you yes, true. if you take a look at things like BO4, BO1, and uh, World at War. Especially with BO1 and World of War, it was kind of like the latency of the game. Like the online didn't work super well. A lot of your shots didn't really actually feel like they're registering, but sure. in turn, it made it feel like it took forever to kill zombies. In mm -hmm. BO4, that was by design. They wanted you to take forever to kill the zombies. I think I think what's important that is on the early rounds when you're meant to be setting up, your guns, if you're playing at least semi well, your guns are going to be killing the zombies. And right. you still have to play well. It's not like you have a wonder weapon on round one, but you can actually shoot the zombies and they will die. I think that's an important, important part gotcha, of the yeah. game I think and like, how to improve it. Yeah, so so with, with with that in mind then, with a health cap, do you not think that like it kind of sounds like what you're looking for is actually to have a health cap, but to just not have an OP weapon like a rocket launcher or something, which basically just sort of supersedes any other possible weapon you could be using because if you did have a cap at let's say round like 35 or 40 for instance then maybe without the rocket launcher in a in a bo4 if you had weapons that did slightly more damage and therefore were more kind of balanced across the board you could kind of use any gun and still have it feel viable and you'd be shooting zombies and they'd still be dying and you would obviously have your your aats in that game which i think personally for me were less fun than the bo3 ones but they'd be there sort of just as an extra little perk here and there um would that satisfy you like is is a health cap maybe actually something that could work for you or, or do you think that in sort of no circumstances would it actually ever be good i think i think it can be good i don't think it should be the fastest way and in okay. bo4 the gaming the health cap was the fastest way which right. is with that with that rocket launcher i mm -hmm. think basically if you if you spawn in fresh on round 70 like say you're playing a two-player round 70 you yep. die out completely you spawn in fresh if you get a like green rarity gun off the wall you should feel like you're in trouble right like <laughs> yeah. you shouldn't you shouldn't feel like you can hold your own against level 70 uh, zombies if you just have a green rarity gun off a wall by but right. if you manage to set back up maybe you don't have the wonder weapon but you manage to uh like pack a bunch of that gun like twice or something you mm -hmm. should feel like you have a fighting chance so i think the health cap could be it could be a good thing uh, mm. It's just that it shouldn't be the fastest way to kill the zombies. There, I, th I think the alternate ammo types having multiple ways to blast through the zombies. That is aside from just gaming the health cap is important for high rounds to be fun. Gotcha. And uh, and flow well. So it sounds like almost then maybe the best case scenario would be for the health cap to still be there, but to be there at like a higher round where like let's say your health cap is at round. Uh, like, I'm just going to pick a random number, 70, because you mentioned that before, right? If it caps mm. at 70, it's going to mean that you're still, in theory, able to use your, like, LMG or whatever to, like, shoot and shoot and shoot a zombie and it will eventually die, but it's not going to be optimized compared to using those AATs and potentially using the Wonder Weapon, or if there are traps on the map, those potentially being in there as well. Um, right. Maybe that's kind of the route to go. I think, for me, the concern through all of this is that Wonder Weapons as, as a part of a map, as an extension of a map's DNA, are so unique to the experience you get on that map. And it sort of feels like, to me, they're a perfect opportunity to give you an experience that you cannot get on any other map. So let's say you're on 
uh, Zetsubo, for instance, right? On Zetsubo, you've got your Masamune and you've got your Skull of Nan Sapwe. The Masamune is less good for killing. So on that map, you're not going to be constantly rinsing the box to get new Masamunes every five seconds. That's not something you need to do. You're much more focused on your special weapon charge. And so you can potentially create a strat that involves the Masamune, but you're probably going to focus the strat around the, the Skull of Nan Sapwe, right? However, the Masamune is still really useful on that map and still has loads of unique utility, like uh, growing your plants and stuff like that, which means that it's still something that you feel like you want to sort of set up and maybe grind for because of the utility that it provides. Similar to the Apothecon Servant, how you can like stun a Magua, things like that. It's extremely powerful as well, the Apothecon Servant, so it like sort of checks all the boxes, but it's in combination with things like the sword as well being unique on the map that I really, really like those, those weapons. And so I guess what I'm concerned about is that if grinding just for the gun only and the wonder weapons are sort of almost pushed aside is uh, the kind of end game focus, that's what you're setting up for. My worry would be that we'll get D-Machine and that will be the flow of the map and that will be fine because it'll be the first one in the game. But then through DLC 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., we might end up with very similar flows happening. And yes, those wonder weapons will be there, but if we're really focusing every single strat on just boom, dead wire turned, dead wire turned every time they're going to end up feeling the same. And the AATs we're using on those maps are unlikely to change as well, because once people work out the numbers and they go, okay, dead wire pops every 12 seconds, and then it's best to have another turn zombie like running around uh, at all times, and and sort of that's the, the optimal way to, to kind of juggle those timers, that's not going to really have any difference on, on a DLC 1 to, to a DLC 2 to a DLC 3. Like, I feel like it's going to be the same experience, and... While I think people do love shooting zombies to kill them and stuff like that, my worry would be if they did neglect some of the systems that I think were, in your view, kind of like secondary systems in, in BO3, like Wonder Weapons and like um, your special weapons as well, it might end up just feeling a little bit too samey. Like, that's that's what I'm kind of concerned about with the, the rarity system. I think that it sounds really cool, don't get me wrong, but I'm just really hoping that they find a way where you are incentivized to use all those wall weapons and you're incentivized to go for your gold rarities or upgrade them to be more rare or whatever the system ends up being, but that there is also something in every map that really anchors you to it in a gameplay, so sort of from a gameplay point of view, not just in terms of the ground you're running on, because it doesn't really matter what kind of ground you're running on most of the time. Most of the time, it's about the guns that you're using in that space. Um, and so that's what I'm kind of like, really, really hopeful for. Um, another question that I have about this that's related to it all is if you've got, like, a health cap for the zombies and, like, let's say they're capping at 40 or what have you and you figured a strat out, do you think from round 40 onwards, if their movement doesn't change as well, because I think in previous games, movement has capped out at, like, they stop sprinting, or sorry, they stop sprinting faster, like, their sprint speed maxes at, like, round 60-ish, if memory serves. Would you like from that round 40 or that round 60 point for every single round beyond that to feel like the same round that you just played? Or would you like something else to change? Like, for instance, do you want the zombies to do more damage at round 100 than at round 80 or something like that? Um, so two things. Yeah, I, I think that the gameplay hitting its peak gameplay is is fine. I, I don't think that as you progress past round 60 or, yeah. or whatever, I, I think it was 55 on BO4, they hit like super sprinter speed, sure. whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't think any changes necessarily have to happen, whether it be like zombie damage or like the speed keeps on increasing infinitely, anything yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that needs to increase to keep the player interested because when you when you're on round 60 you've played the game for a couple hours at this point you're invested yeah. in your game you do not want to die mm. and i think upgrading it to a system where you can feel robbed or cheated is a bad idea i think that is enough to keep the player interested to have constant threat of losing all these hours that you put into this game i think that's enough to not like obviously it's still nice to have like boss rounds like dog rounds right. stuff like that yeah but i don't think necessarily the core gameplay needs to change past a certain round to keep it interesting and uh just to just to circle back on the yeah. other point i think the best round 100 mm. 
in my favorite round 100, given I haven't done all of them, uh, mostly because they look too boring for me to try. <laughs> but um, my favorite round 100 I've ever done is Garad Crovey. And I Wait, think, really, I think it is the perfect combination of not being too easy. This is obviously like if you're going for a fast one, you're going for the fastest strat. Okay. Um, and you think about what it is on Garad Crovey. Uh, you're using your specialist weapon. You're constantly charging that up. And that could very easily have been the wonder weapon for the map. Uh -huh. Because the Ray Gun Mark III, you just don't use on the round 100 sure. because it caps. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dragon Gauntlet could very easily have been the Wonder Weapon. And I think maybe that's even a, like pointing at the fact that maybe Wonder Weapons should go away from a regular ammo system. And maybe it should go to like, a, if you get kills with your other weapon, you charge up your Wonder Weapon type thing. Right. And yeah. that, that, could, that could be a direction they want to take it. Because part of the reason Wonder Weapons could get old is because they constantly have to rely on ammo and you can't buy any for it yeah. unless you do like a gobble gums etc but if you think about grog crovey you have your alternate ammo type you're constantly using dead wire you're switching to that you're constantly using dead wire you're going through zombies like that you're using a trap that strat actually uses a trap and it feels rewarding when you do it because it's hard to survive down there but you have to play well survive be killing zombies and you're charging up your gauntlet, so whenever your gauntlet's out, you go s shooting back and forth with your Stop fist, zooming. killing zombies with that. <laughs> yep. And you have your shield, which is, is right there, so if you get into a spot where you can foresee you're about to be trapped, whip out that shield, you blast, and then you can pick up a new shield if it, if it gets broken. It incorporates sh uh, the shield, alternate ammo types, uh, it uses when, the gauntlet. And there's, a, there's a strat, yeah, it uses the gauntlet, and Trap, it uses yeah. the dragon strike, to oh, right. kill, uh, kill the, what's it called? The Valkyries mm. uh, and go through the Valkyrie rounds fast. It's using like five different systems, not even using a wonder weapon. You could argue the yeah. specialist weapon is a wonder weapon, but it's using five systems all at the same time with not a second of downtime. Right. It's challenging round 100. It's not the hardest, obviously, but it's a sure. challenging round 100 because you have to be paying attention the whole time. You're not corner camping, yeah. but it's fun because you never feel like there's a down second. And that's how I foresee traps actually being fun to use okay specialist weapons being employed correctly and uh alternate ammo types being used to not only charge up that specialist weapon but get kills you're, yeah. you're getting thousands of kills per the game it's so interesting to me that that's, alternate ammo types. yeah it's so interesting that that's like something that you really really enjoyed because the idea of basically taking the repeated box cycling rng out of the wonder weapon and just making it something that is on your person in the same way that your specialist weapon is, is actually seems to me like a really good solution. Like go the jet gun route that they did in BO2 Transit that obviously people at first were like, oh, this weapon sucks. But then high round players were like, wait a sec. It's great. This gun's <laughs> actually fantastic because it's just yeah. going to keep killing even at high rounds. And you can get really skilled at using it really effectively to continuously kill zombies without it ever breaking. And so maybe that is a good route that they could go in uh, Cold War to say that this new like sort of blue, I don't know, Raygun Mark IV type thing that they've got going on there, that could literally like be charged up from i don't know like either just from regular kills or maybe there's a way that in the map like the world's going to renewable energy these days maybe there's a charging station that they've built for yeah. it i don't know dude but something where you can get your ammo back without having to rely on the rng side of it maybe that means that wonder weapons in your kind of framework of what you you personally enjoy for your round of hundreds would be much more viable do you think that's yeah. fair yeah i cool. i think i think it, letting the player not have to rely and and there is there is i think value in the rng and zombies i mm. i think i enjoy the rng and zombies it makes every single gameplay different if you get a double points on round one you're gonna be able to do so much more with that your round one than you would on another game and i like that kind of like system uh what what again comes back to i don't like waiting around and if you have a if you have a wonder weapon and a trap, those are the only ways to get through the rounds. You're either A, just stalling for time, or yep. B, waiting for a random max ammo or to get it back out of the box. And I think that's, I just don't like waiting around. I like yeah. being constantly engaged in the action. That's fair. And uh, rewarded because of that. For yeah, more I, zombies per second killed. Yeah, I, I think the, the waiting around thing is definitely something that I really, really agree with you on. It's just like, my least favorite parts of zombies probably are when I like, for example, you're doing the moon Easter egg and you get the wrong excavator coming in and you're just like, yep. 
man, I've just got to literally just sit here and wait for this thing to just happen for me sort of thing. And it's just, yeah. it, it takes a lot of the fun out of it. And obviously that's, that's in that case, like an RNG decision that's happening, but there are other instances of it too, all over the place where when you feel like the whole gameplay is slowed down, maybe you're waiting yeah. for a trap, for instance, then yeah. you just feel like you're less like locked in with the game. It's not, it's no longer about you like having entire player agency to play really fast or play really slow is just, well, the game is this pace. So I have to only go at that pace and I can't do anything about it. Moon is a um, perfect example of the worst of both worlds because you not only have no control over it because it's RNG, mm, then you have to wait around. It's, right. It's the, it's, I mean, there's a reason that, I mean, moon Easter egg runs are fun to watch, but goodness, they can be frustrating, especially when you're playing them. For sure. 100% agree with that. Okay, so just to circle back then to one of the things you said a minute ago with how you don't want the experience to change in those higher rounds. Um, it's also actually, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna caveat my caveat <laughs> because uh, I want to go on a tangent real quick about Garod. Um, uh -huh. It's actually really interesting that you say that that's your favorite round 100 because I've spoken to a lot of people that have said that they actually really dislike the fact that Garod sort of forces you to play pretty much one way on that map because of where the shield is. There's only one shield bench, and so you're kind of forced to basically be near it at all times unless you want to just be fighting manglers with no shield 24-7. So it's something that I think, as much as it's really good for that high-intensity strat, if that's what you want to do, if you want to play other ways, I think it can get frustrating, which is just an interesting wrinkle I felt like uh, might be worth mentioning. But the other thing, the first caveat I wanted to mention is that with the experience not changing in higher rounds, for me, something that has always put me off going for high rounds is that if you go for really high rounds, you're spending like an insane number of hours, whether it's like 80 hours or like 200 hours, all just all going into one experience, one map, one run. And the fact that round 137 is the same as round 138, to me, just means that I personally am much less interested in going for it. It's like the reason that I would want to get to a higher round is because I would feel like the experience was changing in some kind of transformative way. But as soon as they start being just the same thing, like the number is meaningless at the bottom. It's no longer about whether you're good at zombies, in my view, if you're able to get to round 168 or 169. But at that point, it's more a question of like, how patient are you and yeah, how kind of- yeah, how dedicated are you to putting that time in? But it is much less about the kind of skill that you would need to beat that next round because it's largely the skill that you would have needed to beat the previous round. It's just yeah. a, qu a question of more time. So I do yeah. wonder if there is a way that they can change the game in some capacity to make it so that those higher rounds do have sort of more draw for people like myself that aren't entirely convinced just by the fact that, like you've sunk that much time in, so that sort of already raised the stakes enough to make it exciting. But mm -hmm. I know that for me personally, I know that I would absolutely hate if they made it so that the zombies just increased in speed faster and faster and faster infinitely, like you mentioned. And I would absolutely hate if zombies did more and more damage as the game went on as well. I feel like if I was able to kind of like do stuff with the amount of health or sorry, the amount of damage that zombies were doing at like around 50 or something. And I had things figured out and then I got to round 70. And the only thing that changed was that a zombie like windmilling me just randomly did twice as much damage. It would feel so unfair. And yeah. like it, it just, I, I would hate that system. I feel like, so I don't know what the solution is to transform the experience later on while also making it so that it's not just a case of they're really, really fast all of a sudden and yeah. they do like they one hit you or something. But I'm not sure what the best sort of route would be to, to solve that problem. I mean, what if I get your thoughts on this? What if zombies at later rounds did a lot more like stumbling around like the ascension, like doing a barrel roll yeah. as they're coming towards you? Or maybe what if their spawns just got a lot faster? Would you like that? Maybe that 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 is a good point. Maybe it is something that could be solved with maybe on later rounds. And this could I I, I don't I've never gone for a hundred plus. I only ever go for round one hundreds. Yeah. Uh, and I, that's not even like a big part of what I do. Mm -hmm. But say on round one hundred, the only thing that changes is the zombies just start spawning faster and faster progressively, mm. and it gives you a an opportunity to not spend 
250 hours on the same game as zombies to get yeah. around whatever. But it gives you more of a challenge. It starts getting more challenging. So if you can say, I made it to 150, that's a lot bigger of an accomplishment than making it to round 100 other than just the time commitment. It's hard because I, I'm not a part of that 100 plus community. Sure, uh, so I, I obviously don't want to speak for them. I think it would be interesting uh, and maybe it could be something that starts happening after round 100. I think the zero to 100 experience should cap out around that like 50 mark. And even then, I don't even know how that cap looks uh, because I, I, I think getting to that round 100 is a big staple and it should be a set difficulty and a set experience that you have. Okay. Then maybe after that, it goes into, it's it starts messing with those like zombie mutations they did in BO4 where there's yeah. there's like double or maybe like half the zombie spawns but they get 1% faster every round. Right, and it right, started, right. It's like a challenge mode after round, round 100. Again, I don't know if that's what people would like to see. So dude, dude, what about, what about this, right? If they did that but they made it like you're playing um I don't know, let's say you're playing a dungeon crawler, right? And you do your run and you beat your you beat your kind of like uh, set of, of arenas that you have to go through. This could be like a game like Dead Cells or a Hades or... I mean, you get it with mm -hmm. games that have new game pluses as well, right? It's sort of slightly different, but right. if you had a system sort of like that where you, you got to your 100 in Zombies and then kind of like BO4, if it brought you back to a quote-unquote round one, except you were now playing the like hard mode of it and they like doubled the number of uh, mini bosses that you would get, for instance, or they made it so that you at that point then, um, I don't know, had like a points penalty where you earn 10% less points or like there was some modifier on that 100 run. And so you could then go back to 100 again through that sort of extra difficulty and get even more rewards on top. So maybe you get that penalty to the number of points that you earn, but the amount of Liquid Divinium or whatever the system's going to be is doubled when you're doing that second part of your run. Maybe that's a good way to make it so that your experience is different. Like it's not the exact same thing round 60 to round 600, but you are getting like... Uh, a, a kind of um, a, a more fair potentially um, experience that's not just like, well, the zombies insta kill you now and that's that. Like maybe, maybe that's the sort of thing to go for. Yeah, I, I, I like that idea a lot actually. I think maybe on round 100, you beat round 100, you go to round 101, and then the experience switches back yep. to a round one experience. Maybe uh, one thing I would say is maybe you keep all of your stuff yeah, and the sure. round one zombies are round one zombies again, but yep. they are just now the same speed. They, they, their health gets reset and then you get to have this, the full one through 100 experience again, where you hit that 60 power spike, except yeah, maybe more mini bosses, maybe faster zombies, something like that, mm -hmm. that resets the experience. And maybe there's a different strap for rounds one through 40 because you can kill the zombies and six right. bullets or something like that. There's yeah. there's a, there's more benefit, more strategy, and m way more interesting speed runs to round 200, and actually viable speed runs where you don't have to pause it and go to sleep overnight because you've been playing right. for 100 hours. I think that's yeah. a really cool idea. I like that a lot. Right on that on that point, then I think that this is probably a good place to leave this. We've talked about uh, well, actually, one thing that we hadn't haven't really talked about all that much is player health. I guess like. Uh, so let me, let me, um, on that note then, let's really quickly just address player health because we haven't talked about that too much. With Jug being upgradable now, do you mm. want it to be so that Jug at base health, like uh, your, your sort of regular, sorry, do you want it to be that Jug at base level, like, like level one Jug or whatever before you upgrade your perk is like regular Jug and then upgrades to Jug just give you more health or do you want it to be that they give you like side perks that are just sort of related like no explosive damage or do you want something else like how do you want that to work i would prefer that the health system the health system should be constant whether it be zombie damage whether it be player health yep. i think there should be two levels of health your spawn health and then your health with jug mm. and i think that maybe there should be other ways to mitigate damage like if you get a side upgrade on jug where you get like jug level two and yeah. it stops like like say the parasites you do you get half damage from parasites mm. that's a way to subtly upgrade your health but if you get hit with seven zombie hits you're going down the same as you always do mm. uh 
and I think there's there's maybe possibilities to mitigate damage from bosses, mitigate damage from like specialty zombies, but and when it comes to core zombies, same hit, three hits to down before you get jug, seven once you get jug, and then mm-hmm. everything else is just kind of a system on top of that. Uh, I I'm not a fan. I wasn't a fan of uh, what other health systems we had. I mean, there was like the helmets and revelations. I wasn't yep. really a big fan of that because I just felt confused by how much health I had at all times. Right. And, yeah. And the other thing is, I don't like health bars in zombies. I don't like when the player has a health bar. I didn't oh. like it on BO4. Interesting. Uh, I like the health experience being a learning experience. I don't like constantly looking at my health bar waiting for it to regen. I like the knowing the feeling of, okay, I played zombies for long enough. I know how much time it's going to take for my health to start regenerating. I, I prefer that much, much, much over uh, the experience changing in terms of armor, in terms of yeah. players getting... I don't know. Weird upgrades. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like my I like my bread and butter zombies. Dang I like it. my simple zombies experiences, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. I think I'm pretty much actually with you on that one where I don't want the player to have like 15 possible hits that they can take before they go down. If they get like some crazy jug upgrade, I think that that would just be boring. It would make it too yeah. easy. But also, I, I don't want it to be so that like level one jug is useless because it's only yeah. balanced for tier three or tier five or tier seven or whatever jug. Like I want it to be so that your jug that you get is jug. And then any upgrades to that make it so that your life is easier in different ways. But the health itself of the player is basically yeah. that sort of straightforward, easy to understand system. Yeah. Um, and the last thing probably worth mentioning on that is that what they did in Zombies Chronicles, making there be a noise when your health started regening, I love, I love that so much. Would be very, very happy if they brought that back again yeah. this year. I think that that's like such a good quality of life change. So Treyarch, yeah. thumbs up on that one. Um, Noah, I think that at this point, this has gone on a little bit longer than I expected it to. Do you have yeah, any closing it's a thoughts? Long, long boy video here. <laughs> it's a long boy. Any closing <laughs> thoughts? Anything that you specifically want to say maybe to Treyarch if they happen to be uh-huh. watching this video or to any of the viewers that are watching as well? Um, at the end of the day, uh, my opinions are the only right ones. Treyarch should <laughs> probably just put me as creative director for zombies. Uh, being a YouTuber, you know, uh, if anything doesn't go my way, I will uh, complain about it until it's fixed. Uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> is that what you're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was some, something like that. <laughs> oh, oh wait, yeah. And if you disagree with me in the comments, I will uh, personally uh, be replying uh, how dumb you are to each and every one. Perfect. Um, okay. Yeah. No, no negative comments towards Noah in the comment <laughs> section. Then this is a this is a positive comment section only. Um, this has been a really good talk. I've really really enjoyed this, and I think we've covered a lot of yeah. really interesting ground that I hadn't Maybe actually decide, yeah. like considered before at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank you so much for joining me, Noah. If you guys want to check Noah's channel out, it'll be linked in the description down below, so you can go and check out his zombies videos too. And don't do yeah, that. that's a bad idea. D- don't do that. It's a very bad idea. He will, <laughs> he will, he will reply to those comments and he'll tell you that you smell. He'll do it. Yep. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess my final closing thought is just that I obviously don't have all the answers here. Um, Noah does. And so, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I'm really curious to hear all of your opinions on all of this as well in the comments so that we can cultivate like a really good discussion about what we want to see for Cold War, and then Treyarch can take that on board if they want to or not, and we can just get the best possible Zombies experience uh, to enjoy for the next year. So thanks for being here, guys. Uh, Let me know who I should collab with next as well. I've got a couple of other video topics coming, so I'm going to be talking about Wonder Weapons and all sorts of other stuff. So you can look forward to that. Thanks again, Noah, and uh, we'll see you next time. If this video gets 10,000 likes, Milo will literally twerk for Black Ops Cold War. 10,000 likes and Milo will twerk. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later.